And hi again, everybody, and welcome in. Jim Hunter with Mike Roberts as we look back at Orioles Baseball 2007. And Mike, Right, we're going to look back at July the 2nd. It was an interesting game and in what was a very tough season for the Orioles. Another fourth place finish. A 10th consecutive losing season. But over the course of the baseball season, and you as a former coach, you know you live for these games. You have those games. You have those games. Have those moments where the team steps it up. And going into this game, this looked like it probably was going to be a three to two or two to one game. One game. Because you had Eric Bedard for the Orioles, Mark Burley for the White Sox starting, and anytime you have a couple of aces going against each other, you're not expecting the hitters to be able to do too much. Without a doubt, uh, Eric Bedard. Uh, I've really enjoyed watching him pitch the last few years. He matured tremendously. He's a hard thrower. If you start looking for the fastball, here he comes with a beautiful uh, breaking ball and every once in a while mixes in a changeup. And Mark Burley's that old-fashioned 1950s, 1950s, 60s type pitcher, pulls that hat down, soft thrower. Uh, the hitters really think, you know, this is a night I'm going to get two or three base hits and all of a sudden they've got a soft over for four. The matchup between a pitcher and a hitter is a fascinating part of the game because I'm game. Obviously, the pitchers have their styles. They're looking to get you to chase what they want you to chase, and it's very important when you go into those matchups, in particular against the elite class of pitchers as a hitter. You have to be patient. You have to have a plan. You do, and it's very tough for the Oriole hitters to be patient with Mark Burley because Mark gets the ball, gets back on the rubber, and really pitches in a hurry. And I think he, you know, he has a, a name out there that he loves to pitch an hour and 52-minute game or an hour and 45-minute game. So sometimes you got to back out uh, and give your hitters a chance to catch a breath so that you're not just swinging at his first pitch all the time. Well, the Orioles obviously had a tough season with the 10th consecutive losing season, but one thing they did have, they had the ability to force the opposition to battle the game, get those 27 outs to beat you. This was a team that was very resilient, and we'll see in the game we're about to, to watch tonight, but the Orioles, they forced you to get 27 outs, and as a result, they always had an opportunity to rally late in games. Well, the Orioles have done a really done nice job, starting with Brian Roberts at the top of the order and Nick Markakis and all the way down through, of making really good contact, keeping their strikeouts low. Uh, Brian Roberts has done a great job of taking a lot of pitches at the top order. Kevin Millar in the middle does a tremendous job as well of taking a lot of pitches. So the pitcher does have to work uh, to get the Orioles out. When you see a match matchup of a team that is supposed to win against a team that is supposed to be inferior, and you see the inferior team play well, what you see there is you see professionals saying, wait a minute, you still got to get me out, you walk on the field. I mean, think about it. The best teams are going to win 54, the worst teams are going to win 54, both teams are going to lose 54, somewhere along the way you figure out that you figure Elite, but every day, and that's what's great about baseball. You got to go out and get those nine innings in. You got to get those twenty-seven outs. Without a doubt, uh, don't predict what teams are going to do. No matter if they're in fifth place in the American League East or they're in first place in the Central, like the White Sox have been the last last couple of years. It's an interesting ball game. Every day is different, and the mindset of the players, particularly in the first game of a series. As the Orioles are coming into Chicago to play, uh, I think they'll uh, play extremely well and they'll be ready to face Mark Burley because hitters love to face the best in the league, and Mark Burley is one of those pitchers. And as a coach, I know over the course of a long year, whether it be a long college season and big time college baseball, in particular a major league season, which really goes seven and a half months, what you have to understand as a player, and the coaches have to remind them of that, even the professionals, it's one day within 162, or in a college season, in a college season it's one day within a four-month season. Absolutely. You have to go out day in and day out, and you have to prepare as if each game is going to be the difference maker. Difference Without a doubt, and that's the fun thing from the coaching and the playing aspect of baseball is yesterday may not have been a great day. Today, uh, Orioles lost a tough game yesterday, but today is a new day. Start all over again. Be excited about playing and and uh, and play the best you can for those nine innings. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the final two innings of the Orioles White Sox. 
game July the 2nd, and it was a fascinating game because it was the beginning of a holiday series for the White Sox at home. Mark Burley on the Mount. Eric Bedard had been chased in the game, but the Orioles came back and rallied late. Jim and Mike coming back. Stay with us here. We're coming back soon. Orioles Baseball on Madison brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Check them out at southwest.com. Get them on stop. We're stop wherever you want to travel in the United States. Well, we go to the top of the ninth at Comiskey Park in Chicago. White Sox with a 6 to 5 lead over the Orioles. And that means Bobby Jenks, their fine closer, comes on to try to get the three outs and get the White Sox a win. And Jenks has been one of those guys, Mike, who has been very, very consistent and is very difficult to rally against when he's protecting a lead. Well, there's no doubt. Uh, he's one of those guys that puts a little bit of fear into you because uh, he's just wild enough that you can't really dig in. But if, if I'm the Orioles, uh, I'm looking for hard stuff and looking for it early in the count, even though you do want to have a little bit of patience. But he, he's going to come fastball. Uh, early in the count, I think, on most of the hitters here in the ninth inning. Well, Jay Payton's two-run triple in the eighth inning got the Orioles within a run, so now the Orioles need just to get a man on, and the time run is on base, and here's the suddenly red-hot Corey Patterson leading off, and Corey in the number nine spot in the lineup, already three hits on the night. And ever since Dave Tremblay took over as manager, he has gone on a tear and ball one, and that's what you don't want to do if you're the closer. You're exactly right. So he's going to probably come fastball here the next couple pitches. I've seen Corey really relax lately, and his swing is very, very level. So it's not going to surprise me if he gets some good cuts right here. Jenks going from the stretch. He's a hard thrower. And can't catch up to the fastball, so Patterson won and won the count. And one of the things about Corey Patterson and Terry Crowley works with him day in and day out. When he keeps that swing short and compact, he is a very difficult hitter to get out. Well, he's got great hand action, uh, beautiful and beautiful. And when he hits the ball to all fields, it certainly helps him uh, with that. And, and Crowley's done a wonderful job with Corey regaining his confidence. Slices it the other way down the line. That's going to get in there for a base hit. And it bounces away from Andy Gonzalez. And there's Corey Patterson easily gets to second base with a leadoff double. Well, there's how you start a rally. You need to run the tie in the top of the ninth. Leadoff runner in a scoring position, Corey Patterson, with his 18th double on the year. I tell you, I really enjoy I like to see Corey not only get the ball in the outfield, I love to watch him run. Uh, because he's got such great speed. But that's a tremendous lift, tremendous lift for the Orioles to be able to get a leadoff hitter on off Jinx uh, here trying to rally in the last inning. So Patterson going with the pitch, and you saw it just did stay fair, and then because he hit it the opposite way, the spin benefited Patterson easily getting the second base. Uh, without a doubt. He cut it a little bit with the ball up and away, but uh, Corey, again, has gotten a lot of... Uh, confidence lately and hitting the ball to all fields and uh, so he's off to a good start we'll see what happens now and turning the lineup over here's Brian Roberts who's trying to extend the hitting streak to 13 consecutive games so far hitless on the night and now that tying run and scoring position and there's a ball down and away a 